Hugo Keenan, how's it going? Uh, very, very good to meet you. It's a bit of a down week in, in, in training. Like, when are you guys back in camp and what's the story? Hey, Pat, how's it going? Thanks for uh, chatting with me. Um, we're back into camp tomorrow. So a um, couple of days off to sort of rest, recover. And then, yeah, back into it for a little two-day mini camp before uh, we meet up as a, as a whole group now on Monday. So a lot, of, a lot of work to do in two days, so it'll be busy. But looking forward to getting back in um, to get the review over and done with. And there'll be a lot of learnings from the weekend there. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, Dan Sheehan, we were chatting to him after the game in the kind of the bowels of the, the Stade de France, and he was just talking about the. I think he said it was a wall of noise, like just kind of what what is that experience like? Because you've played an awful lot of your your rugby in kind of half full stadiums or empty stadiums. What was that kind of experience like for yourself? Yeah, it was my first taste of international rugby away from home with a full crowd. So I suppose it was my 18th cap, but first time in that situation. So. I think it was it was it was pretty insane. In fairness, the French crowd were uh, were very good. It was seventy five thousand odd and noisy, loud sort of party atmosphere. And um, I think there's a great Irish contingent over there, maybe five or ten thousand. So you could actually hear them in the crowd as well, which is was great, and it sort of gave us a bit of a um, bit of help really in the game because you need need that. But um, yeah, it's about as tough as you can get at the moment going over to, to Paris to play against that French side on form at the moment. So um, yeah, yeah, it was tough, but uh, it was a cool, cool experience. It's a funny one now because what happens in Italy sometimes is a chance. I remember last year, like uh, Ryan Baird and Craig Casey got kind of debuts and it's a chance for guys to kind of maybe this is your, a couple of fringe players might come into the squad, but as kind of starting players, you guys are probably all itching to get out there and play again. Is that the kind of thing that training is going to probably, you guys are going to be tearing into each other? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we're, we're all going to be keen to sort of right those wrongs from the, from the weekend and to get straight back into it. It's, it's sort of one of those games where it's annoying that it's in two weeks time that you'd nearly prefer it this weekend to, I suppose, rip into it. And, um, It'll be a tough test. Italy have obviously gone quite well and made tough games for France and England over the last two weeks. So uh, we'll be focused on them straight away. Um, we'll be doing a bit of review now over the next two days, trying to get us right. And then exactly what you said, we'll be ripping into each other and into training because that's how ultimately we're going to get better now over the next while and to uh, put those learnings into place. I saw the the French had shared some like uh, post match footage and and kind of match day footage and the one that everybody was enjoying yesterday was Tyg Furlong going in and you know saying let's go for a few beers with the the French lads and stuff. Did did you, did you go into the dressing room afterwards as well and, and meet up with the French lads? No, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't even realize he had gone in at the time. To be honest, no. Um, um, I'd say Tyg might have gone in because our dressing room room was probably a lot bleaker <laughs> and quieter than theirs, but. I think he's gotten to know a few of the players over the last few years, and um, so he's probably catching up with them. But no, um, our 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 changing room probably wasn't much crack now post game, unfortunately. But um, such is such is sport. In in terms of that, actually, because I saw like yeah, Tyg would have swapped the jerseys and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of something a lot of people treasure. I know early early doors, you don't almost want to give away your jerseys, even though you get two to kind of hang on to. But have you swapped many jerseys? And you know, you've as you said, eighteen caps and stuff. Is there any any jersey swaps and anything you kind of cherish now at the moment? I, I actually haven't swapped many, to be honest. Um, like you never know how many you're gonna get, and at the start, I was definitely hanging on to every one I got. Um, because they are special. I gave a few to family members um, who have supported me along the way and um, tr to try to give back, I suppose, um, after all their help. Um, one jersey I did get was Jordy Barrett's after the New yeah. Zealand game. So I had a chat with him and stuff, and he was a gent. Um, so I suppose that was a that was a great day out in Aviva and a special one. Um, so that'll, that'll be a jersey I'll, I'll hold on to now for a while. I, I remember we talked before and... Um... You were we we spoke about the, the Broncos and stuff like that, and you guys had such a good time. And, and Fergus McFadden was was up pushing you at that mm -hmm. stage when we were chatting about it. But 
Um, I think you even mentioned to me and you said, oh, the minute Robert Balakoon comes into camp, things might change and he might be fast. We were chatting to Joey Carberry earlier on today and he mentioned that Balakoon was smoking it up over in, in, in Portugal in those training camps. Was there any kind of races you guys had between each other or any speed tests that you guys all kind of did? Um, no, to be honest, you, you sort of just prove your speed in training and in games. I don't think the S&C and physios would allow it. <laughs> too happy if we were sprinting around racing each other just for, for injury wise. But yeah, I won't even um, chance the fact that I'm anyway close to Rob. He's um, he's a bit of a lightning bolt in fairness to him. Uh, and and oh yeah, go on, as you're saying. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> that, that was that was really it, yeah. So he's he's got the title there for, for sure. And, and is there any forwards that would surprise you? Like even even in terms of uh, like like the Bronco, something a bit more overextended thing, somebody that might surprise you, like even a back row or a flanker that actually might have decent times or, or even over a short distance? I suppose I um, don't know many of the scores of other provinces because we never actually do the Broncos together as, as in an Irish camp. Um, I know the likes of Reese Ruddock um, would be very up there. Josh van der Fleer would be the, the best and the sort of standard in Leinster for forwards. Um, Speed-wise, um, Pete O'Matney is slightly quick. There's obviously Ryan Baird as well. Um, yeah, yeah, they're the ones who, who spring to mind. Dan Sheen can actually clock up a, a good speed in fairness to him for a big man. I was going to think of Pete. Pete's a bit like usual suspects there. Has the limp going on and then just kind of can bring out the sprint when he needs <laughs> <laughs> at the end. Yeah, um, resurrection. <laughs> um, I, I'd mentioned to you before that um, I, I've got my nephew Cormac and he's doing work experience and stuff and, and I had a challenge where I have to kind of uh, recommend to him an album, a, a movie and a comedian. So the, the premise is kind of uh, you're 25 now. If, if Hugo Keenan was to meet uh, the 15-year-old Hugo Keenan today, you come across a teenage Hugo Keenan, you have to recommend an album, a movie, and a comedian. What three would you go for? To try and almost try and impress your teenage self. <laughs> <laughs> wow, tough, tough question. Um, I'll start, I suppose, with maybe a, a singer. Um, he's obviously very popular in Ireland now, Dermot Kennedy, but I suppose as if, if I picked up to him or picked, um, picked him up early on when I was 15 and got on him, um, when he wasn't so trendy and uh, young, and followed him up through the through the ranks, I think um, that would give me a bit of street cred. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend him. Um, maybe I'm a, I'm a fan of him now. Oh, I'm always. I suppose over the last few years, I've gotten into the Guy Ritchie films. So um, oh, yeah. a few of his old school ones like um, Snatch, and then recently The Gentleman as well. So. Um, I suppose there's one more recent and one a bit more old school. Um, then comedians, uh, to be honest, I I don't know too many. Maybe Chris Rock. Mm. Um, so yeah, hopefully your um, your nephew will enjoy it anyway. And uh, great to have him in. Yeah, yeah, no, it is great, great. Yeah. Um, the the other one is actually about. Um, and I don't want to keep up too, uh, take up too much more of your time now, but um, we had him in recently or earlier on the season uh, in House of Rugby, Will Connors, and you know a, a lad, he was flying it as well, like just for mm -hmm. yourself, and he's had a few setbacks. But um, I've seen even, uh, you know, checking out Instagram, I think himself and Jimmy O'Brien. I, I was going to wonder, who's your, who's your best friend in rugby and, and, um, and, and who kind of keeps you sane and kind of keeps you thinking about stuff other than rugby when you kind of need it as well? Yeah, there's the, the two lads you mentioned, Will Connors and Jimmy O'Brien, and then there's Connor O'Brien, the, the three of those mm. lads um, live together. And I probably spend more time in their house than I do <laughs> than I do at home. So they'd be, I suppose, three lads who I've come up the, the, the ranks with and played underage uh, rugby with. Um, and I'd be very close with poor Wills, had an awful run of injuries. Um, same as Connor, so the two of them can't really catch a break at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is which is unfortunate. And then Jimmy's obviously flying it at the moment. So those those lads and then the likes of Andrew Porter, Max Deegan, James, even the likes of Shane Daly from Munster, um, all these guys you sort of come up the ranks with and get to know so well over the years that you'd really form great bonds with and stuff. So um yeah, they'd be my my close mates. But it's we're lucky in Ireland and Leinster, 
um it's actually such a great group of lads and we get on well together and um it's 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 a sort of thing that you can go in and enjoy everyone's company and i think the coaches are great for encouraging that and um yeah we've a bit of crack along the way and then the other the, the last one almost is like um tips or a cheat or any, anybody who kind of is looking at your game because what everybody always sees is even you, you did it at Stade de France again at the weekend just so good under the high ball as well just kind of any kind of techniques that you're you're doing is a hand-eye coordination stuff or is it any other stuff that you're doing to kind of work on that and and, and get such great results from it as well I, I suppose it's probably trying to practice under pressure so there's no point just catching balls what we do a bit with the back trees is if you go together in groups and uh, you might have a coffee on the line for the first person who who drops the ball or um, small things like that to, to make it realistic. And um, I suppose always jumping through the ball, that's, that, that'd be my main cue. So not to, to be waiting for it to come to you. Okay, perfect. Well, listen, that's great stuff. And, and um, good luck now with the rest of the, the campaign as well. And um, yeah, good chatting to you today. And um, yeah, we'll see how these recommend, recommendations go. The yeah. Dermot Kennedy guy sounds like he could be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Pat. Thank you. Stacey Flood, um, great to be joining today. You today. Look, that looks like a very snug jumper you're wearing there. Yeah, it's lovely and warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I was um, just you know reading up about you, and of course I've kind of seen you playing for Ireland as well. Um, admittedly, maybe more kind of um, you know keeping track of the sevens as well. Maybe seeing you more when you kind of broke into the fifteens team as well. But um, how did you kind of enjoy all that experience? Of because I know it's a big sevens background, but like fifteens was last year was a kind of big breakthrough for you. Um, how did you kind of find all of twenty twenty one? Big question to start off with. Um, yeah, no, I found it really, really enjoyable. Um, obviously, there was a few of us that came from sevens over to the 15s for uh, that stint. And it was just really nice to be with such a big group of girls, like such a wide squad. So um, not used to all the people around. Um, no, it was really, really enjoyable. And we were welcomed with open arms. So it um, makes playing a bit easier. Um, no, it was really nice to play at home because obviously you don't get to play in Ireland much with sevens. Um, being a hot weather sport so uh, mm. that was really good and hopefully again this year we get to play with a bit of a crowd like we did in November for the internationals and, and you're a bit of um almost like you go uh Keenan who, who's kind of doing the energy thing which as well like you, the two of you guys just kind of almost seem to take to the 15s as well I know you go has a sevens background as well but um from watching those games like it like uh, of a lot of the players that came in you just kind of seem to take to it naturally you weren't really playing with fear or anything like that. Um, what was that kind of like? You know, was that kind of on the front? Were you kind of nervous under the, under the scenes? Like, or how did you kind of find the whole step up as well? Um, thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I think we had a good, really big stint of training going into those games. So um, obviously I came off the bench for the first two, which is a little bit easier than starting mm. um, for your first and second cap. cap. Um, so starting on my third cap, I was I was quite nervous for the first one as well. Um, and then for the second one, I was also nervous, but it kind of eases once you get into it, once you get into playing a bit of rugby and your mind kind of goes onto the game then and it settles the nerves. Um, for me, I think nerves are a good thing because it just means you're excited to play and it obviously means a lot to you. So getting the chance to play and put on the Irish jersey is great. Um, so the nerves kind of settle once you get on the field, yeah. And and then who like um let's say who would you have um you know watched because you know like again like you're kind of a fan of the game you're playing the game as well but was it a bit of a surreal experience to be kind of playing alongside players that you'd maybe want to watch on TV and, and maybe even got along to the odd game who who were you almost kind of uh, really excited to meet when you first kind of linked up with the 15 squad? Um yeah I was excited I'd I'd met a lot of the girls in passing uh, before but I'd never really got to play with them um. So I was excited to play with Baven. Um, mm. Obviously, she's someone who you want to, who at 10 wants to be putting away anyway. Uh, so she was, she's always an excitement to play with. And then um, getting back on the field with Sene was great. So she used to play sevens with us before also. And getting to play with like the likes of Keir Griffin, um, Claire Malloy, like mm. just, just everyone really, because um, you learn so much from the players around you. And I think it's, always good to learn from other people and kind of steal their talents and be like, oh, I could definitely be better like at doing this for myself. So I might get them to help me or um, stuff like that. So yeah, it's great. And getting to play with Catherine Day and um, 
was great. She's so much knowledge of the game as a nine. Um, so she gave me so much tips and helped me with a lot. So I'm really thankful for her and um, helping me through that stint and making it look like I knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I was looking back at um, just like uh, I was even doing the same to, saying the same to Hugo as well like like checking uh, you know reading up on you watching back at all games looking at Instagram and but there was a brilliant picture of yourself and your mum from from a few years back and it's a classic uh, was like grown up picture she's got like an RTE uh, bum bag and she's got a fag in her hand as well <laughs> but but um, but yeah just kind of and kind of like real nice words as well and, and you can kind of see like even from some of your photos a family means a big thing to you it's a big family like what's it kind of like yeah. uh, to grow up in that because it seems like a sport mad family as well yeah sport and mad is right and um, <laughs> so I'm the youngest of six um wow. so I came last um but um yeah no my mom and dad are great she's given up the cigarettes now and <laughs> um, she's like six months off them so oh, we're pretty good. proud of her for that uh yeah no they're just classic Irish parents like they're just happy for you when you're happy and whatever achievements you're achieving they're just so proud and um, which is great and then my sister Kim is also quite successful mm. um, in the sporting career uh, I'm sure you've she popped up a few times mm. um, and my brothers and sisters all row for the Stella Maris rowing club in Rings End um, and my mom and dad used to row for them too so um, yeah big sporting family but everyone just loves watching and loves playing so it's great to have people watching you who kind of know what's going on as well they're not just saying things to say things like you can take their um, take their opinion and value it we've got um like at the moment myself and my wife we have three kids and it seems like a crazy house and then we I, we grew up we had five kids with my parents and that was crazy so six must have been absolutely mental sometimes especially and um, what was it like being in the middle of that as a as the youngest as well um yeah um obviously when I was born I think my oldest sibling is 15 years older than me so uh, she was kind of gone out of the house all the time and I was probably only a baby so um yeah no it's really good and it's really strange uh we're all really really close and like don't really fight so it's really rare um it just is a credit to our, my mom and dad who have like raised us so well so it's nice to have so many people and so many personalities as well in a house and um, yeah it is crazy though <laughs> we we did a lot more fighting i'd say <laughs> but there um was fights. There was fights. <laughs> yeah i think that's the best thing is like there's yeah. fights but then you could sit down and watch telly again another minute or yeah, two later 100%. um the other one is, is just even from looking back like you've been in the the seven setup even through that like from an early age like when was when was your like debut like it, it must have been as a teenager again was it um yeah when i uh, my first cap was in Kazan. I think I was 18. Um, mm -hmm. But I had played for underage sevens in the Europeans and in the school games as well when I was uh, 17, I think. Um, but I got my first cap when I was 18, and I think that's seven years ago now. <laughs> um, so back in the day. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's been great, though. And the progression through the program is brilliant now and seeing all the young girls who are coming in at age of 18 and even younger at this stage is brilliant because it's just so much better for Irish rugby and um, for the squad to push on, yeah. I, I thought it was a great photo of you as well with Quade Cooper, one of the, the Sevens events as well. <laughs> um, was it kind of like just great to kind of meet somebody like that? I saw he was up to antics again in the top league there in Japan at the weekend, throwing American football style passes. Did you kind of yeah. get to, is that one of the highlights of, of kind of being on that Sevens or meeting someone like himself? Oh yeah, definitely. Like he's such a elusive player to watch, and and he's such a nice person to meet as well. And um, I'd say he only did that NFL pass because the Super Bowl was on last weekend. <laughs> I reckon he pulled it out of the bag there. Um, <laughs> no, but it's great. And um, the people you meet on the Seven Circuit is amazing. Um, and you'd never get that that time um, to meet all those people because with 15s you meet certain teams but then with sevens all the teams are just there so it's like 12 different countries in one place playing and you meet like you get to experience and watch some of the best players in the world like like uh, Rico Ioani was mm. playing when I was playing Sonny Bill was there and his sister plays for their women's as well so um it's just a big huge pool of talent really <laughs> yeah wow yeah. Um, the other one I was going to ask you about is um, you got that GA background as well. You're kind of talking about even the family are kind of into that as well. But you did, did you make it to it? Like, was it a minor final with Dublin as well? And would some of the girls that you were playing with then still be playing now for the, the senior team? Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of them would still be playing. Um, we were, we were uh, 
a successful team that actually did, I don't think reached our full potential. Um, we didn't win that final. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of the girls still play now. Um, a few of them are playing AFL as well, like Laura McGee and stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, and yeah. So I would, have, I would have played the same year as her and Carla Rowe and um, a lot of those players. So yeah, no, it's great to see them excel in um, the GAA world. So it's good to see that they're still successful and pushing on winning, winning all Ireland's every year now. Yeah, oh, really? incredible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the um, the other one was kind of, uh, like, actually just on, on our house rugby show last, we had Alan Gilpin, like the CEO of World Rugby, and he was talking about growing the women's game and different ways of doing it. But he was saying that um, maybe, and he said this is only a short-term solution, you might just have like Irish players, Welsh players, even Scottish players going over to play in France and England. And we're seeing that a bit more with like, you know, like Adele's over there. Um, you have Linda going over to Claremont as well. Like, and I think there's seven that were in last year's squad are playing a bit of club rugby over there. Is that something that you'd ever consider doing? Like if, if it meant that you'd kind of have more consistent games or would you be someone that would just love to stick it out in Ireland and kind of play provincial rugby a little bit more or, or even have like a women, this is a big question. Actually, I'm realizing it's halfway through it, like a women's European cup competition as well, something like that. Yeah, you took the idea straight from my head. Um, I think for me, it would be about growing the game in Ireland. Um, it's great that those leagues are so competitive, but imagine that you could have that on your front door and you could be playing in Energy Park every weekend or finals here and there. Like I think that'd be a great opportunity. And maybe if you did have those provinces playing and the end goal for the top two of those was to play the French, the top two, and the top two from the UK, like... Imagine what that could do for women's rugby all over the world, never let alone just Ireland. So I think that would be a huge um, thing to push on with. And hopefully one day it does happen. Um, but for me, I think it'd be just ground the game in Ireland yeah, and staying here. I'm a home bird. <laughs> Perfect. Well, listen, the, the last question I was going to ask you is uh, something I was asking you as well. Um, who are your best friends in the game? And, and, and who are they? Are they good for keeping you grounded as well and talking about stuff that's not all about rugby as well? Like. Um, yeah, my two veterans I've played sevens with, uh, Lucy Mulhall and Amy Lee Murphy Crow, would probably be my closest companions in the team. Um, yeah, no, they're totally keep me grounded, and the three of us try to push each other on as much as we can in any different ways. But yeah, no, definitely, um, it's great to have a good support system in the team. And who's out of the three is who's the fastest? <laughs> I think you could take a guess at that. <laughs> you can tell you the slowest is easy, easier. <laughs> you get the bronze medal. Yeah, yeah, I'd get the bronze. <laughs> I, I distribute, I distribute, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's brilliant uh, chatting to you today, Stacey. Yeah, good luck now. To you. Yeah, good luck in, in the Six Nations and stuff when it comes up as well. And great to have crowds back as well. It'll be brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Thank you.